Hi there, guys. Today we're going to look at two new, well, let's call them plugins for Unity. One of them is called uh, Prototype. You can see that's the bar right here for Prototype. And the other one is called ProGrid. And uh, both of these plugins or expansions of the Unity editor really seems like something I can use for my uh, level designs, as you can see. I haven't used any of them yet, but mostly I use uh, Blender right now, and you can see uh, models like this one is something I do in Blender, and I skin it there as well, and then I bring it in here. Uh, the idea with prototyping is you can do the actual modeling right here, and, well, guess it, skin it, I guess, sorry. However, there is something called Pro Builder. That's uh, the upgraded version of uh, Prototype. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that right now because that's somewhat more expensive. I think that's ninety dollars US dollars. Yeah, while the prototyping is only fifteen or twenty, depending on if it's a sale. However, I got the prototype and we're going to play around with it and actually use it for something. So I'm going to set up a new level. And uh, as usual, let me switch to my other screen so you can see that just for a second. There you go. Uh, as usual, I'm going to set up the initial level using Tidy Tile Mapper, as you can see right there on the left with the blocks and everything. And I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to, once the level is set up, well, the basic start and finish, I'm going to build out the level using uh, Pro Builder, or sorry, Prototype. So I'll just make a shortcut in the video. So if you're really interested in watching how Tidy Tile Mapper works, I have in one of my previous videos a short guide on how to start out your levels with that. Okay, so now I've set up the basic of the map. I have the layout which I made with the tidy tile mapper and I've placed my player character. And one thing I noticed right away was because I have uh, ProGrid enabled, this is enabled, uh, I was already able to snap everything. You can see it's snapping into grids and it's <laughs> Wonderful. I know you can hold control and it basically does the same, but now you don't have to. And one of the things uh, ProGrid really should help with is not to have these small areas where you can watch through the scenes. So it's going to align up perfectly. Okay. So now this is the start area. And usually I would just bring in this prefab I have right here called, uh, well, stone floor maybe, or sandstone. And that, as you can see, it's basically a, a bunch of blocks. There we go. <clears throat> but I'm going to hit delete and we're going to try doing the same thing with the pro map. Oh, sorry, prototype. So the first thing you need is to create a block to work with so right here and you can see it's way down there i don't know why it's going down there so let's just hit p a cube dimensions one by one by one yeah sure create so we click new cube close this window and we can see we got this cube and it's also snapping into alignment however as you can see the alignment is not the same Check that out. Can you see that? That's a problem. Well, it's not really a problem. I can just turn off the grid. There we go. And you can see it's minus 0.4. So I'm sure it's minus 0.5. That's usually what I work with. And in this direction, we are at 0.5 as well. So I have no idea if this is going to work, but if it's going, if it's working anything like I think, 
I should be able to enable the grid now and it should snap. No, I have to do something else then. Because what I wanted to do now is just to make sure it snapped right on here. Well, I'm sure you can just enter 0.5 here and it's going to snap per half. Sorry, when enabled, of course. Yeah, and you get the half block. Yeah, I think we're just going to go with that because that's fine. <clears throat> And I'm going to place it in one of the, the corners of my starting area. And this is just going to be a introduction. So the shape is also going to be pretty simple, but it, it's going to work, I'm sure. We have this block in the corner and we now want to expand it. And it's sort of like when you're extruding in, a, in modeling software. So uh, let's hit geometry right there and you can see this changed its shape so top basically means it works like an ordinary block and geometry means it's edible not eatable edible <laughs> and you can select the sides how cool is that you could also select sides like this well we're just going to do that and check this out <laughs> that's just cool so that was basically five blocks. Let's, uh, let's try it this way. Sorry, we need to select the side. There we go. Well, that was easy. So drag and clicking and it looks okay. Now here's the thing, if we uh, were to create something uh, crazy. Well, another thing you need to remember, right now there is no collider, so let's switch to the play screen. There we go. And if I hit play, I'm sure the ball will fall right through the ground. No? We're just waiting for... Some kind of, no, actually, it didn't. Okay, that's uh, surprising. Well, surprisingly positive. Well, let's just add a uh, directional light so we can actually see what's going on. There we go. Okay, well, surprise, surprise. Back to main screen. Let's, uh, let's create something different because if you have played my game, this game is available Android and I will link it in the description. It's free, of course. If you have played it, you will have noticed that I have objects and blocks sticking up of the screen and over. So it's kind of distracting and annoying to the player. And that's intentional to confuse your view and sometimes just basically obstruct your view of the object. Any any possible traps available. So let's uh, let's try to create one of those. So again, we're going to select, well, I'm not sure what they're called, but let's just call them prefabs or pre-tools. Pre and we're going to do the cube again, new cube. And you can see it's way down there. So I'm just going to hit P and bring it up here. Thank you. I'm going to hit save real quick. And make sure we are on top of that block. Okay. So I want to create something different. So let's just start by scaling the block down in size. But however, I'm clicking the S and nothing is happening. Oh, you have to click over in the geometry again. Okay. And R for resize. And we're just going to scale it like so. Okay. Uh, that's going to be fun because now it won't fit the grid anymore. <laughs> How about that? So this time I'm going to set the grip to uh, 0.25. There we go. And it's going to fit on the middle. Nice. 
Then I'm going to select surface edit and I'm going to select the top surface and just bring it up a bit. And I actually think I want to disable the grid because I want this to be more fluid. I'm going to scale the top. So we get this sort of squared cone view. There we go. <laughs> okay. And I want to extrude. There we go. It's just pulling out an entire block when you hit that thing. That's fine. It's cool. So. I'm, my intention is really to create sort of an art way, and I have no idea what I'm doing here. I've never used the software before, but it's, as you can see, it's quite intuitive, and it feels uh, natural to just, yeah, something like that. Okay, for this point, I actually want the grid enabled because I'd like this one to hook on to the same it as that block down there. It may seem it's not, but it actually is because these blocks on the field is actually 0.8 in scale. So naturally it would stick 0.2 over the edge. So that's fine. Going to select for service, disable the grid again. And that's one thing I'm really missing, tooltips. Anyway, going to hit that once. Bring that down to, so I roughly get a square in the center there. And then I'm going to, going to undo that and again, bring that out. Okay, I'm going to, Enable the grid again and 0.25 is fine. Select the end. Mm, there, I think I want it halfway down and I'm just going to copy the entire thing and place one over here as well. So top mode. Select the entire thing, control D, move it over, <clears throat> rotate. So let's see what direction is that's uh, 180. But then the scale is off. There we go. Well, <laughs> that was fun and it seemed to work okay so now the idea is well since this is pr prototyping uh, i can't actually export this model i can uh, well let me uh, align this up a bit better There we go. Uh, normally, I would now export this thing into a known format, such as OBJ or something like that. And uh, in Blender, I would uh, apply my UV texture and really design the thing how it's look, going to look. Or I would uh, actually just build upon it at some sort of graphics levels or whatever I would like it to look like and just improve the appearance in general. However, in prototyping, you can't. So that's the main reason why you would upgrade to uh, Pro Builder. That's the export function. So I'm not saying don't buy this because this is, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, very cool indeed. And uh, I'm surprised that uh, it's actually working with the surfaces just out of the box and you're able to use them as is. Let's see if I can find uh, 
a nice texture. Just browsing through everything. Materials, uh, sure, let's try that. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, let's uh, let's change that to uh, onlit textures. Oh, it changes everything. Okay. Did you see that? I have this guy selected. And it also changed that guy up there, even though they are not connected. That's uh, unexpected. Maybe unfortunate, but uh, let's, uh, let's go with it. Yeah, you can see. That's a problem. It changes every object made. Well, let's see if we can... Uh, component break prefab instance no we can't let's uh, add a mesh collider replace it yeah and mesh it's not adding a default mesh so we're forced to use that and well i'm going to need a pro tip on this uh, if i want some one material on this and another on this because well i do i don't want the same material on two items or texture sorry but i'm sure somebody will be able to answer this in either comments or a video uh, of course i'll be uh, writing to the developer over on facebook and actually i already did yesterday and he was really fast to reply and they seemed like friendly, helpful guys, and that's a big plus in my book. So let's see how they respond to uh, the texture thing. Or if that's a pro feature only. That could be mean a problem. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe, and if you'd like to uh, see more Unity creation videos, again, let me know. And if you don't want to, also let me know. It's nice to <laughs> basically know where people stand on this. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. See you.